Hi everyone, I'm Eileen from Raycraft Books, and this is Magic Mirror Night. Thank you for joining us. We are at the finale, the very last chapter of The Tomb of Time with Marco and Miranda, who in the last chapter, if you remember, just escaped the ghost arena and they landed in this other room where they found their magic mirror. Remember, they thought it had gotten destroyed earlier on. So now they think they can get home. But unfortunately, there's someone hiding in the shadows. So let's go see what happens. Chapter 13, The Tomb of Time. Chief Architect General Meng stepped into the room. Behind him stood Craftsman Tang. The architect spoke. We offered to come collect your dead bodies. Tang told me it would be safe and that I would find you alive and well. I understand you claim to be the children of Anxi Sheng. Grandchildren, said Marco, to be precise. That is a big claim to make to be the offspring of a thousand year old magician. The boy shrugged his shoulders. The movement caused his malfunctioning flashlight to fall out of his pocket. It hit the floor and turned itself on. A beam of light shone up to the ceiling. Craftsman Tang took a step back. The vase of, sh of sunshine? The sorcerer spoke of this. General Ming looked down at the flashlight. His jaw dropped open. Marco picked it up and gave it a shake and a thump. He turned it on and off a couple of times. Thank goodness it's working again. Must have been a loose connection somewhere. Must open it up and have a look at the insides when I get a chance. He realized that he was becoming more independent. Until now, if he had broken something, he would have assumed that it would be the duty of one of the adults in the house to fix it. Are you here to steal the emperor's property? This was General Meng. No, said Mira. We're here to fulfill the prophecy that the cube would disappear to mark the moment when everything changes. When the emperor dies, I mean, moves, from normal life to whatever comes next. The general shook his head. We just received news of the emperor from the minister of justice. The sorcerer has for several weeks been giving him a special potion that will enable our leader to live far longer than a normal man, twice or three times as long. Hang on, said Marco, what is this special potion? We don't even have stuff that does that where we come from. And we have loads of cool stuff you don't have. The architect said, they are made of one of the most rare and magical substances on earth, liquid metal, quicksilver. It has many names, mercury. You see it flowing in the rivers there. He pointed to the shining rivers of molten metal flowing through the scale map of the necropolis. Uh-oh, said Marco. Mira said, if the emperor has been taking mercury for several weeks, then I have news for you. The emperor is going to die soon, very soon. General Ming and Craftsman Tang stared at each other. Marco nodded. Yeah, she's right. It's a deadly poison. His sister asked, where is Xiao Ta? We have to speak to her. She's gone, said Craftsman Tang. Can you get her? No, she's gone. Gone forever. She didn't feel safe here. She's gone to join the child army. They've left. They started their journey to the sea. She said she felt safer with the sor sorcerer than here. Mira said, she may be right, I don't know. You're not safe anywhere. As soon as the emperor is dead, the minister of justice is going to seal all of the craftsmen in the tomb. You'll die here. The two men looked at each other again. Tang said, 
it may be that the emperor is already dead. That would explain the unexpected visit of the minister of justice. Come, we must go. The four of them raced through the tunnel. The two men knew a long network of secret passages that had led them to the edge of the encampment, emerging in some woods. Mira bit her bottom lip. I do hope Xiao Tao will be safe. I trust the sorcerer, said Craftsman Tang. After all, if what you say is true, he has rid us of our lethal emperor and escaped with a large group of people. The children ran to a clearing in the woods with the magic mirror and waited for the moon to rise. It was time to go home. The sun shone through the classroom window. The history teacher, an elderly woman named Stella Sims, sat at her desk, packing pens and paper into a bag. It was break time, and the sound of children playing could be heard through the half-open windows. There was a knock on the door. She looked up. Mira and Marco Lee entered the room. Well, hello there, she said. My favorite pupils. She gave them a quizzical look. Are you just visiting for social reasons or is there something I can do for you? Can we ask you a question? The girl asked. Of course. You know the ship of young people, the children's army that the sorcerer guy took to Mount Pinglai? Mrs. Sims took a moment to identify what Mira was talking about. Are you referring to the expeditions of the first emperor of China's sorcerer? back in, when was it, 210 BCE? Marco nodded. We want to know what happened to the ship of young people. One of our friends is on it. His sister glared at him. Was on it, she said. It was like 2,000 years ago. I know, but it doesn't feel so long ago. He said, time flies and all that. Mrs. Sim smiled. She was used to the fact that these two youngsters appeared to live in a fantasy world where history and modern life intermingled. It was great that they had such active imaginations, especially considering the superb grades they got in history as a result. What happened to the 3,000 teenagers, Mira continued. When the sorcerer took his second expedition to look for the Mount of the Gods, he took 3,000 teenagers with him to find the elixir of life. Oh, yes, I do remember this, said the history teacher. Let me think. Some people called it the fleet of virgins since all the young people were unmarried. The first emperor's sorcerer, um, what, what was his name? Zhu Fu, said Marco. That's right, Zhu Fu. On his final journey, he took a huge fleet of ships with several thousand soldiers and several thousand young people to find Anki Shang on the island of immortals, Mira said. What we want to know is this. Did they sacrifice the young people? Yeah, said her brother. Did they throw them overboard or kill them in some other way? The history teacher scratched her chin, trying to recall what the latest research said. Well, no one knows the full details of what happened, after all. We are talking about something that happened two millennia ago. But if I remember rightly, none of the legends talk about them killing the youngsters. Quite to the contrary. She smiled. What do you mean by that? Mira asked. I don't think they lost their lives. The majority of sources say that the opposite. I mean, they were fruitful and multiplied. This baffled her audience. Translation, Mira asked. The history teacher leaned back in her chair and intertwined the fingers of her hands. The legend says that the sorcerer knew the emperor was a mad monster who would eventually kill him since the elixir of life did not exist. So he put a plan into motion to escape and start a new country. And some say that's exactly what he did. Mira's eyebrows rose. He started a new country? 
Yes, he sailed across the Bay of Bohai and the Yellow Sea and out into the Pacific Ocean. He landed on a beautiful island and settled his people there. With lots of young people, they established a colony. The teenage boys and teenage girls married each other, eventually had children, and a new country was formed. Where was the island? Nobody knows for sure which one it was. Some scholars think that the sorcerer and the ship of youngsters landed on the northwest coast of Japan. Certainly Japan had few inhabitants in those days and did suddenly expand in population from about that period onwards. So that may have been it, or they may have landed somewhere else. As you know, there are a great many islands along the coast of the Pacific Ocean, several thousand. Thank God, said Mira. Now I can stop worrying about her. Uh, my friend who was on that ship 2,000 years ago, Mrs. Sims smiled. You guys have powerful imaginations. Anyway, I have a better idea. Now that you know you don't have to worry about your friend, why not instead go and make plans to visit her descendants? A trip to Japan could be fun. Minutes later, they were walking down the school corridor, heading to the playground, but Marco turned left to go to the library instead. Where are you going? His sister asked. When we got back last night from 210 BCE, there was a new mark on the magic mirror on the edge. There are three marks there now. I'm going to go and look them up. I'm sure they mean something. Mira nodded. There were, there were still many mysteries to unravel. The footsteps they had heard in their home, which had prompted their journey to the land of the first emperor of China, remained a mystery. On their return, they searched the house but found it empty. She thought about joining Marco in the library, but, but then noticed a cluster of her friends at the end of the corridor. One of them, a tall, dark girl with Melanie, called Melanie Sun, smiled at her. Hi, Mira, she said. We're just talking about what to wear for the end of the year school dance. My dad said he'd pay for a new outfit for me and if I read three books in a week and I'm halfway through the third. Cool, said Mira. You know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking I might wear something from your mom's shop. The girl's mouths dropped open. Melanie said, you mean that polyester print stuff my mom sells? Yeah, I actually think it's kind of cool and in a retro sort of way. To her delight, the girls nodded. Could be, said Melanie, if you choose really carefully. My mom would be so thrilled if it all comes back into fashion. Mira continued. There's something special about those clothes and the material, it's soft and smooth, fit for the daughter of an emperor in my book. Thank you so much for joining us for the reading of The Tomb of Time. If you want to catch up on the series or go through it again, please visit us on our Raycraft Books YouTube channel where you can hear all of the books starting from chapter one. And what's really great The Wall of Willows, the next book in the series after The Tomb of Time. Would love to share that with you. So hope you return for more adventures with Marco and Miranda. See you soon.